of the black land. Y'all gotta hear about this black man. Queen out of the black land. Y'all gotta hear about this black man. From near and far, they talked about King Azar. Birthed as the Earth Soul, the East Star. At Obia was his native land. Higher peace consciousness was his native plan. Although he traveled the Earth to its limit. His home base was in the land called Gimmit. His holistic living message was nurtured by she. His soul may accept phenomenally the supreme she, the fertility goddess of the black land. Yeah, y'all gotta hear about this woman. common sense and reason with this. When it is said, know thyself, know for a fact that a presence greater than self is advising one to be aware of self. Beware of the nature of self. First and foremost, self is not the wholeness of one's being. It is not one's soul for essence. A greater presence than self exists, and no matter how high the higher self attempt to go, pretends or proclaims to be, one was still being trapped in the individualistic nature of self. That's right, the higher self is just a greater facade, a greater claim of self-deification by a self. And what kinds of relationships would manifest out of the nature of self-deification? Would such a relationship not breed the same nature of envy, jealousy, vengeful, and lust and greed? into the generation next as he and or she seeks to dominate, control, rule, possess, and enslave the soulful essence of another being, all in the name of love. And would this not then breed a lower and lesser mental construct of masculinity and or femininity into the generation next, who would then have an even lower and lesser connection with the divine order of masculine and feminine energy as he and or she. And out of this conflict would not come harmony, but rather sexual confusion and chaos. We ask you, is this not the nature of masculine and feminine relationships as they exist today? Checkmate. If you can reason this to be so, then let us continue. Know thyself. The spiritual war is all about the individualistic nature of self that functions out of sync, out of focus, and out of harmony with the holistic living consciousness that expresses the essence of life and supreme love. The individualistic nature was born outside of divine order, standing willfully opposed in rebellion against the duties, obligations, and responsibilities of divine socioeconomic family community order. Anyone who carries the encodes of that individualistic nature may appear cooperative and pleasant, but only so long as self-interest is being served, regardless of how the interests of self may adversely affect others. However, once the DFI self does not get its way, the hellish fury of that reactionary nature erupts from the toxic unseen, which is well encoded deep within the nature of the deified self. Thus, please comprehend that toxic disorder cannot occupy the same space as divine order at the same time. That is, no two opposite energies can occupy the same space at the same time. This means that any individual who surrenders to the dictates of the self-asserted will, the addictions, the codependency, dysfunctional patterns, the traumatic relapse, the haunting memories and reactionary tendencies, will be at odds with divine socioeconomic family community order. We have had this happen on several occasions where both males and females encounter so much damage and rage within their own self, so much emotional pain and fear that the individual made a conscious choice to follow the dictates of the deified self and seek those familiar patterns of toxic reaction and emotional overload as a source of relief and release, temporary release, mind-numbing, delusionary, superficial relief. Yes, it appears to be much easier to point the finger 
outside of one's own self than to be accountable, responsible, and mature enough to address the toxic disorder of one's own self-deified nature. Thus, the self-deified nature aims to keep one's life energy weak, feeble, and deplete enough to be manipulated by self-sabotaging thoughts of self-doubt, self-hate, and low self-esteem, while at the same time claiming to be of a higher self. Checkmate. So many do not realize that the only way to overcome such a vicious cycle is to reconnect with the soulful essence of one's being in divine humility to the most supreme seen and unseen ancestral spirit presence of masculine and feminine energy. Remember, in the beginning, God said, let us make man, and that us had to include she, who had to be there to conceive he master plan. The best way to translate this is one must have enough divine humility to align within the divine laws of universal order symbolized by the sacred order of the Ankh. We repeat divine consumption, fruit of the tree, divine union, masculine and feminine energy as he and she, forward multiplication of divinity into the generation next through divine social economic family community order. Take a few moments to allow common sense reasoning to remain at the forefront of one's consciousness. Every single time there is an exposure within the inner workings of any individual who approached the I and I and the sacred ancestral Naga priesthood, we have seen the hurt, the harm, the imbalances, the disruptions and corruptions of masculine and or feminine energy that produce severe instability and insecurity. These vulnerable and sensitive areas get triggered whenever an individual has his or her mental constructs of self challenged. And so, like it or not, believe it or not, this is the last stand in the resurrection of the sacred ancestral spirit presence of the children of the sun. And we better get it right this time or suffer the most fatal and agonizing consequences. We're not talking about those past tactics that arose as a result of the 1960s consciousness era, where mass drugs and massive violence suddenly flooded into various communities where populations were beginning to reconnect with a greater consciousness as solarized beings. Yes, across various color lines, there was a denouncement of that invasive and oppressive nature that installs inferiority and superiority complexes so as to justify divisive monotheistic syndromes of domination, control, and rule. We're talking about communities that were destabilized where official strategies targeted specific populations to quote, keep them in their place, a space and place of consciousness that breeds codependency and mental disorder. That's right, codependency and mental disorder, two of the primary strategies used to break one's connection to the soulful essence of one's being, to break the spirit of he or she, and cause one to be at the mercy of that oppressive energy that dominates, controls one's energies. That is the deified self. Please be aware that when we say this is the last stance and we better get it right this time or suffer the most fatal and agonizing consequences, we're talking about consequences even more destabilizing than the counterintelligence strategies of COINTELPRO and those unofficial strategies carried out to prevent the prophetic resurrection of a soul arising Messiah consciousness. We're not talking about the affirmative action era, where the concept of reverse discrimination was used to fuel even more division and a polarizing identification of us versus them. As oppressed populations began to demand their rights, civil rights, women's rights, equal rights for employment, and the demands for justice, it was seen that the strategies of divide and conquer 
were used to keep groups and subgroups fighting among and against each other for the same crumbs. And furthermore, any coalition, any coming together, quickly became the platform and stage for some charismatic deified self to establish an even larger following of personal glory. Know thyself. We are talking about a warlord strategy here, where the master overlord and overseers of conflict, confusion, and chaos declare spiritual war based on race, creed, color, sex, religion, disability, and our national origin. That's right, a destabilizing nature of energy that causes division and polarizing opposition among populations who all have the same basic needs of food, sunshine, and tender love and care, born from the same melanin-encoded DNA, offspring from the same equatorial motherland, presently identified as Africa. Populations that have become so war-torn, so divided, so conquered, so well-ruled by the nature of the deified self, that right here today, these individuals can sit around and watch as one high and mighty deified self threatens another high and mighty deified self with the detonation of weapons of mass destruction. And there's very little personal concern. Modern day war and enslavement, terrorist attacks, massive sickness, disease, sexual violation, violence, war and crime, seemingly one horror story after another and the toxic nature of energy running the show is virtually ignored. Why? Because he and she have been so ripped and torn apart from any sense or experience with divine union that the isms and the schisms of individualism as it relates to racism, sexism, classism, and the religious isms and schisms of indoctrination thereof keep most individuals so distracted in drama that the real crux of the matter will remain hidden. The crux of the matter is that the individualistic nature of self-deification seeded and birthed the battle of the sexes, which is the complete opposite nature from the divine union of masculine and feminine energy. As a result, a male will function in opposition to his natural and innate role as provider of divine guidance and protection, and the female will function in opposition to her natural and innate role as provider of divine nurturing affection. The nature of energy forwarded by both he and she in this instance would then function in opposition to the essence of life and supreme love. And within the nature of opposition, opposites attract. And within the toxic parallel of opposition, anything goes. Checkmate. And no matter what his or her intentions or his or her words, the only thing that can manifest out of such relationships is toxic disorder. Disorder to its logical conclusion where men would act like women and women would act like men. And this would be the sign that the deified self is approaching its bitter end. Check the matrix of this triple six relationship fix where the ego driven self gets its kicks. Now I and I receive a lot of questions, all kinds of questions, especially lately. For example, when asked if we have a land base, our response is yes, we have land, plenty of it. When asked, is it for sale? The answer is no, none of it. Our land is solely for the use of divine socioeconomic family community development. If we should place an individual on a parcel of land, it is no private ownership by that individual or group of individuals, regardless of demands to purchase or otherwise possess the land for a personal agenda. This has long been our policy and shall remain as such. If an individual decides to dishonor, disobey, or disregard these policies as prescribed within the sacred order of the Ankh, and continues to insist on having his or her own way, they are free to go his or her own way somewhere else 
outside of the Quatamani Divine Social Economic Family Community Order. We have a text that makes the initiate process easier to comprehend. What we have come to realize is that the true nature of communal living is rejected within the mental constructs of the mass majority of man, he, and she, who are under the domination and control of an individualistic consciousness. And the I and I will attempt to make this clear as we continue forward. All donations, offerings, and contributions are welcomed, appreciated, and are used to advance the development of the Quatamani Divine Socioeconomic Family Community Order as a holistic living example of the Sacred Order of the Ark in action. However, no monetary amount can guarantee an individual's rights of passage into the Quatamani vibration. This can only be determined by the nature of one's attitudes, values, behaviors, and beliefs, and how such are carried out in thought, reasoning, and action. We repeat, any and all donations, gifts, and contributions are non-refundable and cannot be used to bribe, persuade, or pay one's way through the initiating phases of detoxing and purging and healing, which are the necessity for entering into the Quatamani Divine Socioeconomic Family Community Order. We have come to realize that the chaotic nature of the individualistic environment is collapsing and many are seeking an exit, even though they carry the nature of that same self-centered individualistic nature deep within his or her consciousness. This is why we require that any initiate commits a detox, purging, and healing process immediately. We have found the nature of the DFI self to be deceptive, misleading, tricky in its movements. We have also found that many who desire to make a move are curious about what that move will look like and what they will be able to bring with them from that toxic parallel. When curiosity gets sparked, individuals ask all kinds of questions, wanting to hear our view on all kinds of subjects that range from same-sex relationships, orgies, mate swapping, nudity as a community practice. Yes, we get questions about smoking marijuana and dietary patterns outside of 100% raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, and nuts, and much more. However, it should be obvious that we cannot even approach all of these different kinds and types of questions in this presentation and have things make sense. We can, though, give a clear and precise response that should assist one in comprehending the nature of the Quatamani Divine Socioeconomic Family Community Order. Our response is, was, and remains steadfast and firm. We uphold and maintain a holistic living way of life encoded in the sacred order of the Ankh. Divine consumption from the tree of life, raw and living fruits, vegetables, seeds, nuts, herbs, and spice. No smoke, no fire. Divine union of masculine and feminine energy as man, he, and she. No deviant or deviating relationships that crisscross, contradict, or otherwise confuse this nature of divine order so that he and she can forward the multiplication of holistic living divinity into every offspring and vibration of the generation next through divine socioeconomic family community order. And we say again and again, if it is not about this, we are not about that. This presentation will continue as Common Sense, Use It or Lose It, Part 3. Subtitle, Check the Matrix of this Triple Six Relationship Fix where the ego-driven self gets its kicks. Come on, y'all. The High Priest Quatamani can't put everything in a 20-minute video. There are over a dozen books that he has written to provide greater comprehension and clarity across a wide range of holistic living truth. In fact, the initiate's text will answer many questions that you may have regarding entry into the Quatamani Divine Social Economic Family Community Order. 
And for those who are very serious and who want to feel and sense the sacred teachings of the Quatamani Royal Priesthood, we highly suggest the new album release available right now as a download, Eye of the Earth Solar Messiah, He and She. All these sweet sops and the custard apples should be ready by March or April. We're going to feast.